Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I hope this finds you well. I've opened the window because I needed some fresh air and there's a very noisy sparrow outside and the starlings are trying to nest over the window. So if you hear weird noises, that's what it is. Uh, right, good morning. Um, today is an interesting day in that we remember as a church, as churches, um, Joseph of Nazareth, AKA Jesus's earthly dad. Um, so our um, uh, lectionary readings for the day are actually changed as they do for lots of you know, um, important saints. Um, and um, sorry lots of other things going on to do with funerals um so the lectionary is changed for different saints and today is we're remembering joseph of nazareth it, it i think technically should have been yesterday but obviously yesterday was mothering sunday and that trumps saint joseph so there you go things you didn't know possibly or perhaps you did um so the readings this morning are psalm 25 um, I think I'll probably do all of it, although it's quite a long one. If I stop part way through, you can read the rest at home. Um, and Matthew thirteen fifty four to the end. Matthew thirteen fifty four to fifty eight, if you want to put another way. Um, so we'll be looking very briefly at that, um, because my. My inbox this morning is filling up as I talk to you, even more than it was already. There we go. So let's take a moment of quiet and uh, we will reflect on St. Joseph just a, a little bit this morning. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love, according to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory for ever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And so as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 25 To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame, let not my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame, but let the treacherous be shamed and frustrated. Make me to know your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you have I hoped all the day long. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, and think on me in your goodness, O Lord, according to your steadfast love. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore shall he teach sinners in the way. He will guide the humble in doing right, and teach his way to the lowly. 
All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth to those who keep his covenant and testimonies. For your name's sake, O Lord, be merciful to my sin, for it is great. Who are those who fear the Lord? Them will he teach in the way that they should choose. Their soul shall dwell at ease, and their offspring shall inherit the land. The hidden purpose of the Lord is for those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever looking to the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me, and be gracious to me, for I am alone and brought very low. The sorrows of my heart have increased, and bring me out of my distress. Oh, oh, bring me out of my distress. Look upon my adversity and misery, and forgive all my sin. Look upon my enemies, for they are many, and they bear a violent hatred against me. O oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be put to shame, for I have put my trust in you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for my hope has been in you. Deliver Israel, O oh God, out of all his troubles. Let us pray. Free us, God of mercy, from all that keeps us from you. Relieve the misery and the the misery of the anxious and the ashamed, and fill us with the hope of peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. going to read now from Matthew 13 verses 54 to the end of the chapter as we continue to remember Joseph of Nazareth. Jesus came to his hometown and began to teach the people in their synagogue so that they were astounded and said where did this man get this wisdom and these deeds of power? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And are not his brothers, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And are not all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all this? And they took offence at him. But Jesus said to them, prophets are not without honour, except in their own country and in their own house. And he did not do any many deeds of power there because of their unbelief. It's interesting, isn't it, how easy it is for us to forget um, Joseph Joseph and his place in Jesus' story. Um, someone who faced huge challenges um, in the Christmas story, for use of a better phrase, um, and who certainly after uh, the, the little incidents where, Joseph, uh, where Jesus um, gets lost and ends up in the synagogue as a, as a young child about the age of his bar mitzvah. Um, Joseph doesn't really appear after that. Here uh, uh, he's almost there, he still isn't named, um, which in a patriarchal society is really quite interesting in itself isn't it? Um, but the other thing that fascinates me is, is at the time carpentry would have been um, a really 
important key um, skill and and job within the local community. Um, but there's something here about the because it's I don't know a practical skill. Suddenly, you know, the whole family is dismissed because there couldn't possibly be a prophet, aka Jesus. Um, we know he's more than that, but you know, there couldn't possibly be somebody close to God, wise, um, you know, full of of teaching and understanding of Scripture coming from a carpenter's family. Um, not very forward thinking. Um, but we all do it, don't we? Do we? I hope we don't. But it is easy, isn't it, to, to make a disconnect between what we know of somebody's um, family life or background and what we find it possible to believe they're capable of. I mean, it's it's why there's always such a hoo-ha about, um, rightly, about getting um, people into um, university um, from underprivileged backgrounds. You know, being underprivileged in, in money or where you live or whatever doesn't mean you don't have brains and you don't have skills which could be anything from the practical skills of carpentry to being a prophet of God or more. Um, and I think carpentry at the time really it was probably a bit like a plumber today you never find an out of work um, plumber. Um, Jesus had been brought up amongst this community and they cannot get their heads around who he is, what he has been called by God to do. So what does that say to us? Who, who are we not listening to within our own communities? Who are we dismissing because some random pointless piece of discrimination um, who is it that we need to listen to from within our community to show us um, the way forward in various aspects of our um, Christian lives And I don't know the answer to that. I think actually we're pretty blessed in St Mary's and St Barnabas. I would hope that's true for St Peter's too, given that I was called out from among them. Um, I think their track record's not too bad. Um, but <laughs> um, yeah, it's, um, it's interesting. How much do we listen to the prophets from within our own Christian family, those who are directing our faith? Here's another gentleman of scripture who doubted and had his tongue stopped until John the Baptist was born. Let's say together, if you've got it in front of us, the Benedictus, the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, 
to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks that you uh, call us to uh, speak of you and that you call people from all walks of life, all uh, places in our community of faith, to speak honestly and openly of what they understand of you, however simply or um, complex their reflections are, they do, Lord, need to be given a space space to speak and to be listened to. We pray that you might uh, encourage us all in that, whether we are the speakers or whether we are the ones that need to respect those who are speaking. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray, Lord, that uh, there will be nobody in our communities who uh, feels forgotten. I'm acutely aware of uh, how little uh, visiting I currently have time to do beyond uh, the funeral visits I'm called to do. And I pray that we might care for each other visiting those in need, helping them where necessary, encouraging them in faith, giving them peace, if necessary, your peace that be passes all understanding if uh, they are in um, mental turmoil in any way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the needs of the world, Lord, for all areas of conflict and discord, for all the political machinations that go round people, the world where people are jockeying for power and influence rather than simply getting on with caring for the, their own people, those who they are directly responsible for, without turning it into a, a political game and a dangerous one at that. We pray for those for whom faith is uh, a critical problem, the freedom to uh, practice their religion becomes uh, a bone of contention and conflict. And so we remember especially the land that we call holy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those uh, among us and known to us who are struggling with ill health. 
those whom we care for directly and indirectly. And we pray for those um, in the medical profession and in other professions as well who are called to uh, use their knowledge and wisdom to discern carefully the best way to care for people, to make them well to help them to receive the education that is their due. Give them strength and patience, Lord, that all might know your healing touch. In Jesus' name, Amen. collect for today. God our Father who from the family of your servant David raised up Joseph the carpenter to be the guardian of your incarnate son and husband of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Give us grace to follow him in faithful obedience to your commands through Jesus Christ your Son our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And trusting in the compassion of God, we pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. It's lovely to have had so many of you join me during the course of our prayers this morning. Lovely to see you, Marion and Joy and Nick and Barbara are the ones that I've been able to, to track. Um, I'm sure there will be others that use this during the course of the day. Um, I'll be sending it to Penny with prayers for peace as she faces uh, surgery tomorrow. Go well. God bless. <laughs>